Now for our story. Lefty Larkin had come to a decision. As he got into the farm pickup truck this morning and headed towards Wakefield, he knew exactly what he was going to do. In the back of his mind, there was the thought that Aunt Mary wouldn't approve of his plan. But this didn't deter Lefty, for he was firmly convinced that she was wrong about Sergeant Bill Meade. Adding up what seemed to him conclusive evidence, Bill gave Lefty's character a grade of zero, and he knew from his conversation with Peggy Douglas this morning that Aunt Mary had been misled by her niece's attitude. It was quite clear to him that Peggy hadn't given up hope about Bill. Lefty hadn't told Aunt Mary of his discovery of Peggy's change of mind. He was going to handle this situation himself. When he got to the town square, Lefty Larkin parked the car and, entering the farmer's bank, walked over to David Bowman's desk. Hello there, Lefty. Good morning, David. Are you rushed for time, or may I talk to you for a minute? Certainly. Things are a little slack this morning. Come on in, Lefty. I had planned to come by and see you people last night, but, well, I got bogged down with a lot of work. Um, going to be busy this evening? No, I wish you would come by. Hmm. How, how's Mary? Fine. Oh, by the way, I got a card from Randy this morning. Oh, well, that's swell. I thought I'd phone Mary and tell her. She hasn't heard for quite a while now, has she? No, but you know how it is. Mail from overseas can be pretty erratic at times. The phone her, David. She doesn't say much, but I know she'll be relieved. Hmm. What did Randy say? Mm, not much, just that he was feeling very fit and still hadn't given up hope of getting home soon. <laughs> He told me to keep a sharp eye on his family. Well, it needs one. Oh? Yeah. What's the trouble? David, I'm worried about Peggy. What's the matter with her? She'd be perfectly all right if she were let alone. But she's so darn gullible, David, and trusting. Bill Meade keeps her on a, on a perpetual seesaw. What? Yeah. I think I have the setup all right, but... Well, I thought maybe you might know something. David, what do you think of Bill Meade? Well, Lefty, <clears throat> I don't know the young man too well. He's been to see me a couple of times, and he's talked to me quite confidentially. I'd say that he's a young man who has his troubles, all right. Well, I don't see that that excuses him for making trouble for other people. I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. David, how can I sit back and let this happen to Peggy no, when I know... Lefty, that... wait a minute. Don't start giving me an argument before I know what it's all about. You know Kit's leaving town? Yes. Do you know why? Mm, Lefty, you know I don't enjoy my niece's confidence. Well, there's something peculiar going on, and I'd certainly like to get to the bottom of it. David, the other day Bill came to see Peggy. He told her he was going to get a divorce from Kit. Oh? Yeah, that's what he said. It seems he found out how dishonest Kit had been with him. He gave Peggy a lot of talk about how he'd known all along his marriage was a mistake, and he wanted some kind of commitment from Peggy. She wouldn't give him one. Actually, she couldn't under the circumstances. And I, a surprise fool, went to Bill. Oh, I, I don't know what I was thinking of, David. But I knew Peggy still loved him, and, well, if this marriage of his was wrong, if there was any chance for the two youngsters... Well, I spilled everything to Bill. I told him I felt he could count on Peggy. Then he told me he wasn't going to get a divorce. Last night he came by and told Peggy that. No explanation, nothing. Well, that doesn't sound like Bill. I think it sounds exactly like him. I think we've all been mistaken in that young man. Oh, it isn't the divorce that's important. Lord knows I hope he never gets one. But it, it's, it's what he's doing to Peggy. Well, how does she feel about it? Well, that's what I don't quite understand. Aunt Mary told me last night that she said she was through with him, that she'd seen the last of him, and seen him for what he was. But this morning, after breakfast, I was talking to her and trying to help her, and, well, she resented everything I said about Bill. She came into town last night after he'd left, and I have a feeling that she may have seen him, David. That's the only way I can account for her change of mind. Uh, it's not a very pleasant problem, is it? Not only that, it's one that can't be solved. 
So it's one that should be ended. Well, evidently Ben Calvert feels much the same way as you. What are you talking about? Ben was in to see me. He's as distressed about Kit as you are about Peggy. Oh? What did he have to say? He wanted to know if I knew what was going on. He seems to think that his daughter is leaving town because... Well, because she and Bill are having trouble over Peggy. Oh, he does, does he? Well, you know Ben. You bet I know Ben. And I know just where he'd put the blame. I know exactly where he'd put Peggy, and I'm not going to have her involved in anything like that. I don't know what Bill's up to, whether he's playing two ends against the middle or not. But I know he's not going to string Peggy along. Lefty, I, I think you may be doing Bill some injustice. All I know is that he can't have any respect for Peggy and act the way he has. And I know that no good will ever come of it for her. She seems to be in a state of mind where, where he could influence her, get her to believe anything. Well, isn't that an assumption on your part? No, I don't think so. If you'd talked to her this morning as I did, I think you'd agree with me. So Ben Calvert thinks that Peggy is to blame. Look, Lefty, probably you don't know all of the ramifications of this mix-up any more than I do. Things like this are always unpleasant. But Peggy, Bill, and Kit, well, they aren't babies anymore. Maybe they have to work it out their own way. Yeah, that'd be all right if Bill were dependable and honest and a gentleman. Well, your feeling against the boy is very understandable at the moment, but it may be a little harsh. I don't know what you're contemplating, but my unasked-for advice is that you let things alone for a while. Well, I have a right to correct a mistake, certainly. What do you mean? I'm the one who went to Bill and told him Peggy still loved him. I can't undo that, but I can certainly protect her now. What are you going to do? The only thing I can do. Is that the only answer I'm going to get? I'm afraid so, David. Does uh, Mary know? No. But certainly I have a right to assume some responsibility. David, I just can't sit by and... I'm her father. I know. But no one else knows it. You've never claimed the, that right, Lefty. Well, I'm claiming it now. I think I see why you stopped to talk to me this morning. You really didn't want my advice. There's some doubt in your mind. You really just wanted to argue with yourself. Uh, maybe so. And if that's true, the doubt's gone, David. I've won my own argument. See you tonight, maybe. Lefty Larkin got up and walked out of the bank, leaving a very distressed David Bowman. It wasn't so much Lefty's interference that worried David as his attitude. He was aware that Lefty was angry and belligerent, and from long experience, David knew only too well the possible results of such a mood. Knew that his desire to protect Peggy might lead him to do the rash, the ill-advised thing. But Mr. Bowman would have been more alarmed if he had seen where Lefty went after leaving the bank. He went across the square to a building that bore the legend Calvert Real Estate and Loan Company. Well, good morning, Mr. Larkin. Hello, Miss Ward. I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, how's everything at the farm? Is Mr. Calvert in? Why... Why, yes, I think he's talking on the phone at the moment. Is there anything I can do for you? No, thanks. I want to see Ben himself. Well, I'll tell him you're here. May I ask what you wanted to see him about? You may. Tell him I want to see him about his son-in-law, Bill Mead. Jessie Ward completely lost her composure for a moment. She started, obviously, and then hurried into Ben's office. A moment later, the door was opened again, and Lefty was shown in. Ben Calvert stood behind his desk. The two men stand facing each other. Two men who haven't spoken to each other in years. Two men who, at this moment, have one thing in common. To ensure the future happiness of their daughters. But I wonder, Lefty, if this visit of yours will achieve anything but the opposite effect. 